If you recall, we started this series with conversations about the movement for black lives and the role of activism in our sports arenas, in our streets, and in Washington. So here to complete the circle is an athlete whose activism could wind up deciding this Georgia Senate runoff we're in the middle of. Please welcome WNBA champion, Olympic gold medalist, and point guard for the Seattle Storm, Sue Bird. Welcome to the show, Sue. Hey, thanks for having me. You've had like a Hall of Fame career that flourished through two decades, multiple championships, including your latest. Congrats, by the way, that was awesome. Thank you, thank you. So my question is, how does a baller from Long Island... Oh, here we go. <laughs> Find, her out the accent. Yeah. <laughs> Find herself as an instigator in a global social protest movement that uh, not only called out a racist billionaire owner, but also may have found her replacement <laughs> at the same time, may have done that. How does that happen? Uh, good, good question. <laughs> I think, um, you know, as an athlete from Strong Island, yes. um, you know, I, I grew up, I was born and raised like you said, on Long Island in Syosset, but I went to school in Queens, yeah. played basketball my whole life. And the truth is like, I've just been, you know, amongst a lot of black women. I've been a around a lot of black women, mm -hmm. their families, the culture, and, and, and I've seen yeah. what has happened. You know what I mean? Like I've seen the racism, I've seen mm -hmm. the mar you know, them being marginalized. I believe it when people tell me, you know, when my teammates tell me they've had racist encounters right. and it obviously upsets me. So I just wanted, you know, this season to, to support my teammates, to support the people in the league for them and also for myself, you know, to, to step up and, and have a voice and to use it. And as you mentioned, the owner of the Atlanta Dream yeah. came out against us supporting Black Lives Matter. Right, I remember. And uh, yeah, we just had to get strategic with it. Yeah. How, how did those first conversations start? We had a group chat. Really? The entire league. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it started with that, like, hey, let's get on this Zoom call. Mm -hmm. There's this guy named Reverend Warnock. Wow. Like, let's see what he's about. And and Reverend Warnock was amazing, got on a Zoom call with us. And we were able to, uh, I guess, vet him. Even though I joke, like, he's so amazing. <laughs> yes. but the vetting process <laughs> right. took about five seconds. Yes, right. Um, but yeah, we were able to just kind of mobilize from there pretty quickly, mm -hmm. given we were all in the same place. And I thought it was great that you guys we're really at the forefront of the uh, branding of it all, too. We're not just with the words come out of your mouth, but putting it on your uniforms and making that bold statement, you know. Was that one of your ideas, or did that come from someone else? Um, are we talking about the, the Vote Warnock? Yes. Well, the Church. Vote Warnock and also Say Her Name. I mean, you guys were doing... Taylor, I think right. you guys led that before the NBA, if I'm not mistaken, or it may have been around the same time. Yeah, definitely around the same time. Yeah. Um, so having, we had Breonna Taylor's name on the back of our jerseys. Right. Uh, we had Black Lives Matter on our shirts. Say Her Name was on the back of our shooting shirts. Black Lives Matter was on the court. And that was really, um, that was a product of just the players in our league. Yeah. Our president of our, our um, union is Neko Gumake. Other players that are on our executive committee, um, Leja Clarendon, they actually formed a social justice council. Yeah. And they were the ones that really led the way on that. That's great. Um, the vote Warnock came a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, now the vote Warnock part, I was interested in this because the other things to me, they almost, they seem very organic, I'll say. But once you get into vote Warnock, now you're in partisan political politics. So right. did you get any pushback from going there? And, and let's not, your arrows were pointed directly at the person whose name you guys refused to say too at the time too. Was there any pushback from that? Did you feel at all or? No. And, and I think mainly because we were able to get our message across mm -hmm. without, without involving the league. So they didn't know about it. Right. And they're really the ones that would police our uniforms anyways, uh -huh. but they don't have any say on what we wear into the arena. Right. They don't have any say on what we talk about in the media. So we, we were very strategic and, and, and on point, really, on how to kind of just avoid their involvement. You know, we didn't want anybody telling us what to do and when to do it. So we just found the times that were ours, yeah. that belonged to us. And that's when we were able to make these messages. Yeah, it is amazing. I think the young girls who are looking up to you guys see not only the passes that you're making behind your back, you know, <laughs> but no, but really they, they are aspiring to be outspoken like you, you know, and, and the people that you're with. Um, have you heard from young people in any of this? And uh, has any of that, you know, inspired you or, or, or made you look at this in another way? You know, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. I think the younger people are the ones inspiring wow, me. Wow, yeah. Because, no, for real, yeah. because like we are just talking about, when I first got drafted, yeah. you kind of, had, 
I don't know. It's there, this wasn't something someone told me. Right. Somehow I knew. You know, like I knew not to say anything. I knew to kind of just you know, fit in my little yeah. role and be happy with what I got. But these younger players coming in, they're the ones that are like, oh, no, wait, like, this isn't good. Oh, no, wait, around, that's right. not how it's supposed to exactly. be. Exactly. Yeah, they're the ones that are like, give me a charter flight, <laughs> right. you know, where I was just happy to be whatever they gave. Yeah. So they're the ones that I think have inspired me the most to, to be more vocal. And now that I'm like this older player, I think the weight of my voice uh-huh. is a little different from theirs. Because I'm older and sure. I kind of have this career behind me, but they're the ones that are inspiring me to use it for sure. And lastly, what is your hopes for for the future for 2021? Just maybe even personally, or maybe just for some of the things you've been involved in. I think for the next year, I would just hope for myself, for the WNBA, for for anyone who has been in these conversations talking about Black Lives Matter, mm-hmm. that a you just keep with it, and b you take it. You know, the, the, I guess it's just like like that famous quote where it's like. Actually, I don't even know what the quote is, but I know it's like small steps to get to that, sure. you know, to the end goal, if you will. Good so enough. Just keep it small. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Some, yeah. You have to, uh, I think when you can see the goal in front of you, it, uh, you can gather more people around sometimes and get more people excited about something that they know that they can reach and, and touch and feel when it's tangible. Absolutely. Congrats on everything. Uh, and thanks so much uh, for being at our show. 